I'm gonna start Magic Tree House number twenty six. Good morning, go Good morning, Gorillas by Mary Pope Osborne. Good morning, Gorillas. Contents number one: dark and rainy. Number two: cloud forest. Three. Number three: boo boo. Number four, nightmare. Number five, silver back. Number six, good morning gorillas. Number seven, eating out. Number eight, a special language. Number nine, goodbye gorillas. Number ten, a special magic. Prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek. Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. Eight years old Jack and his seven years old sister Annie climbed, climbed into the treehouse. They found that it was filled with books. Jack and Annie soon discovered that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to the places in the books. All they had to do was point to the to a picture, and wish to go there. While they are gone, no time at all passes in Frog Creek. Along the way, Jack and Annie discovered that the treehouse belongs to. Morgan Le Fay. Morgan is a magical librarian of Camelot, the long ago kingdom of King Arthur. She travels through the through time and space, gathering books. In Magic Tree House books five to eight, Jack and Annie help free Morgan from a spell. In books nine. To twelve, they solve four accident riddles and become master librarians. In Magic Tree House books thirteen to sixteen, Jack and Annie have to save four accident stories from being lost forever. In Magic Tree House books seventeen to twenty, Jack and Annie free a mysterious little dog from a magic spell. In Magic Tree House books twenty one to twenty four, Jack and Annie help save Camelot. In Magic Tree House books twenty five to twenty eight, Jack and Annie learn about different kinds of magic. Chapter one: Dark and Rainy. Tap tap tap. Jack sat up in bed. Rain tapped against his window. His clock said five a.m. It was still dark outside. Annie peeked into his room. "Are you awake?" she whispered. "Yep," said Jack. "Ready to find some special magic?" she asked. "Maybe we should wait," said Jack. "It's so dark and rainy." "No waiting," said Annie. "I'll get an umbrella." You bring a flashlight. Meet you downstairs. Okay, okay," said Jack. He jumped out of bed. He pulled on his clothes and put on a jacket. Then he grabbed his backpack and flashlight. Jack slipped downstairs and out the front door. Annie stood on the porch in jeans and a t-shirt. The air was chilly and breezy. Don't you need a sweater or something? Said Jack. I'm okay, she said. Let's go. Annie raised the umbrella. Jack turned on the flashlight. They followed a circle of rainy line light down the down the street into the woods. They headed through the Frog Creek woods. The flashlight lit up the trees, the wet leaves and dark branches. Then it shined on a dangling rope ladder. Jack raised the flashlight beam. There it is, he said. A circle of light lit in, 
lit the magic tree house. Morgan's not there, said Annie. I can't tell. Maybe she left us a message, said Jack. Jack grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Annie put the umbrella down and followed. When they climbed inside, Jack shined the flashlight around the treehouse. Morgan Leafy wasn't there, but the squirrels from their trip to Old England were. Here's proof we found a special magic yesterday, she said. Yeah, she said. Jack smiling. See the magic. He had great memories of acting in a play by their friend William Snakepeer. Did Morgan leave us a new secret rhyme? Asked Jack. He shined the flashlight on a book lying under the window. A piece of paper was sticking out of the book. Yes, said Annie. She picked up the book and pulled out the paper. Jack shined his light on the paper while Annie read aloud. Dear Annie and Jack, good luck on your second journey to find a special magic. This secret rhyme will guide you to find a special kind of magic in worlds so far apart. Speak a special language. Talk with your hands and heart. Thank you, Morgan. What kind of language does does she mean? Jack asked. I guess we'll find out," said Annie. "Where are we going?" Jack shined the flashlight on the cover of the book. It showed the huge trees partly hidden by mists. Mist. The title was "An African Rainforest." Rainforest. Said Jack. Good thing we brought our umbrella and flashlight. Remember the rain in the amazing rainforest. Remember how dark it was under the tree tops. Yeah, said Annie. Remember the spiders as scary as well. Jack said, "Not all rainforests have the same bugs. Remember the river snakes," said Annie, "and the crocodiles." Well, said Jack, "Not all rainforests have big rivers. There are there are different kinds of rainforests, you know." White said Annie. She pointed to the cover of the book. "I wish we could go there." The wind started to blow. Oh, remember the jaguar? Said Annie. And the vampire bats? 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 Wait! Said Jack. But it was too late. The wind was blowing harder. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Cl- Chapter Two: Cloud Forest. Jack opened his eyes. I can't tell what kind of rainforest this is," said Annie. She stared out the window. Jack looked out too. It seemed to be to be daytime, but he couldn't see much of anything. The quiet forest was covered with fog. Jack opened their research book and read. The misty rainforest in the mountains of Central Africa is called a cloud forest. Oh, I get it," said Annie. "We are up so high; it's like we are in a cloud." Cool," said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and wrote: "Cloud forest, rainforest high up in mountains." Then. He read more. The African cloud forest is home to many animals, including elephants, wild buffaloes, black leopards. Jack looked up. Black leopards? He said. Don't worry, said Annie. Jack cleared his throat and. 
kept reading. Antropes, wildcats, and gorillas. Gorillas? Said Annie. Don't worry, said Jack. I'm not worried. I love gorillas. Said Annie. They are totally great. I don't know about that, said Jack. He pictured huge apes pounding their chests. I'd like to study them, though. Write down their habits and behavior, just like a real scientist. Whatever," said Annie. "Let's just go. This be a fun adventure." She took off down the ladder. Jack drew his notebook, the research book, and the flashlight into his pack. He hooked the umbrella over his arm. Then he followed Annie. When they stepped onto the ground, Jack could see better. The fog had turned into a fine mist. Jack and Annie started through the cloud forest. They walked walked around huge trees wrapped with moss. Moss. They pushed past the tall shrubs and leafy plants. Wow! Look at that tree," said Annie. She pointed to a fat tree. It had wide lower limbs padded with thick cushions of moss. It looks like a piece of furniture," said Annie. "Like an armchair." "Yeah," said Jack. "I I better draw it." He put the umbrella on the ground. He pulled the flashlight out of his pack and put it next to the umbrella. Then he took out his notebook and pencil. As Annie walked ahead, Jack started to draw a simple picture of the fat tree. Hey, Jack! Annie called in a whispery voice. Come here, quick! Jack grabbed his pack. He moved around the tree and caught up with Annie. Listen, she said. Jack heard the branches snap, crack. A little part, he wondered, crack, crack. Jack nervously looked around the forest. Maybe we should go back up to the tree house, he said. We. Could read a little more and learn a little more. Annie didn't answer. Jack turned to her. She was grinning from ear to ear as she start, stared into the bushes. Jack followed her gaze. A dark, shaggy little head was peeking out from a cluster of leaves. "Boo, boo!" a small gorilla asked. Chapter Three: Boo Boo. The gorilla's fur was very black against the green leaves. She had large nostrils and small ears. Her bright brown eyes were full of mischief. Boo boo boo! She said. Boo boo, boo boo yourself," said Annie. The gorilla hid behind the leaves again. Then she poked her head out. Peekaboo! Said Annie. The gorilla clapped her hands together. She stuck out her t- tongue. Jack and Annie both laughed. Boo boo boo! The gorilla said. Then she bounded away through the misty forest. Hey, boo boo! Don't leave us. Annie called. <laughs> Jack. Rolled his eyes. Don't name her Boo Boo. He said to Annie, "You don't have to." Wait, Boo Boo! Annie shouted. She took off after the small gorilla. Turn every animal into your best friend. Jack finished. He shook his head. Then he made a list in his notebook. Gorilla behavior. Please pick a boo. Claps hands. Sticks. Out tongue, as he wrote, Jack heard Annie laughing. But then he heard high shrieks. He caught his breath. A leopard, he wondered, carrying his notebook.
Jack hurried in the direction of the noise. He found Annie and the small gorilla perched in two trees. What's wrong? said Jack, standing beneath, beneath the trees. Nothing, called Annie. We are just playing. The small gorilla scratched again. Then she scratched her head and hiccuped. Annie scratched. Annie scratched too. She scratched her head and hiccuped while they played. Jack studied the gorilla a bit more. He noticed she was about the size of a three years old kid. Her fingers looked like human fingers. They even had fingernails. He made a new list. Young gorilla, size of three years old, fingers like humans, fingernails. Jack heard the tree leaves shaking. He looked up. Annie and the gorilla had both climbed higher. Hey, calm down, Annie. Jack called, you might fall, plus it's getting dark. Jack looked around, light was fading quickly from the forest. Is night falling? He wondered, or is a storm coming? The small gorilla squished again and climbed even higher. Hey, Boo Boo, where are you going? said Annie. She climbed even higher too. That's enough, Annie. Calm down now, said Jack. I'm serious. You, to his relief, the gorilla settled on a branch. On a branch. On a branch. Settled on a branch. Annie did the same. The gorilla broke off, broke off a piece of tree bark. She nibbled it like a candy bar. Annie broke off a pieces, piece of bark. She nibbled it like a candy bar too. The gorilla threw down her bark. Mm -hmm. She grabbed a tree branch and swung to another tree. Don't fight, Annie, shouted Jack. But his warning came too late. Annie threw down her bark. She grafted a tree branch and tried to swing to another tree. Annie didn't swing like a gorilla. She fell from the tree and crashed down to the ground near Jack. Annie! He cried. Chapter 4 Nightmare Jack Nair Beside Annie, she was gasping for breath. The gorilla bounded down the tree and over to Annie. She bit her lower lip as if she were worried. Are you okay? Jack asked Annie. Yes, Annie panted. Just got the breath knocked out of me. Wiggle, wiggle your arms and your legs, said Jack. Annie wiggled her arms and her legs. Good, nothing's broken, said Jack. Just then, he felt a drop of water hit his arm. The mist had turned to rain. Uh-oh, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. I better get our umbrella and flashlight, he said. I left them near that tree that looked like a chair. I'll come too, said Annie. She started to sit up. No, no, catch your breath, said Jack. It's not far. I'll be right back, 
he took off his jacket and dropped it over her. This, this help you stay dry, he said. He pulled on his pack and stood up. The gorilla screeched. Stay with Annie, said Jack. Then he dashed back through the cloud forest. He looked for the fat tree with the white limbs paddled with moss. As he peered through the growing dark darkness, Jack saw many fat trees. He saw many limbs paddled with moss. Soon he could hardly see trees at all. He realized that both a storm and a night and come to the forest. Night had come to the forest. Forget the umbrella and the flashlight. He thought it was more important to get back to Annie before it was too dark. They could wait together for daylight. As Jack started back to Annie, he could hardly see. He didn't know which way to go. Annie, boo boo! He shouted. He felt silly shouting, boo boo! But he didn't know what else to call up. the small gorilla. Jack put out his hands. He moved slowly through the dark, rainy forest. He kept calling for Annie and Boo Boo. He listened for them, but he couldn't hear anything above the loud patter of the rain. Ah! He shouted. He had run into something that felt like a ball of spider webs. As he jumped back, he slipped and fell in the mud. He crawled over to a tree and huddled between two of its giant roots. I'll just wait here until morning, he thought. Then I'll find Annie or she'll find me. As rain dripped all around him, Jack wondered if leopards came out at night. He quickly pushed the thought away. He tried to think about morning and finding Annie and going home. He was really ready to go home. Why did Morgan even send us to the cloud forest? He wondered. He tried to remember the secret rhyme. To find a special magic, he whispered. He couldn't remember the rest. He felt tired and miserable. He took his backpack off and rested his head on it. He closed his eyes to find a special magic, he mumbled. But he couldn't find the magic. He couldn't even find the words that finished with rhyme. Worst of all, he couldn't find any. The fun adventure in the cloud forest had turned into a nightmare. Chapter 5 Silver Bag Jack felt something toggled on his sleeve. He opened his eyes. Boo boo! The small gorilla was staring, staring at him in the dawn light. Jack stood up. His arms and legs felt stiff and ashy. His wet clothes stuck to his skin. He looked around the cloud forest. Misty sunlight shined through the tree branches. Where's Annie? He asked the small gorilla. Boo Boo waved her, waved her arms and she bounded off between the trees. Jack pulled on his pack and followed. As the small gorilla led him through the cloud forest, her head bobbed above the leafy plants. Finally, she stopped before a row of shrubs.